Hey guys, Akil here. You may not notice, but when it comes to the Trading Coach Podcast, I don't use any producers, editors, or anything like that. It's just me. Now, if you know me, you also know that I'm not the best when it comes to technology, and that's exactly why I love Spotify for podcasters, as they make things super easy to record, distribute, and even earn money by recording ads like this. Best of all, it's free. So no matter if you're at home, on your computer, or on the road, and you just have your phone available, whenever that great idea comes up, you can start recording right away. So if you're interested in becoming a podcaster, start creating today with Spotify for podcasters. I personally use it, and I personally recommend it. Hey guys, Kiel Stokes here. Welcome back to the Trading Coach Podcast. Today, we're going to talk about a topic that, well, a lot of you guys don't like hearing about, but you really need to hear about it, and that is risk management. Now, today's podcast comes from a recording from a video series we have on YouTube called The Trader Coffee Break. This is where Jason Greystone and myself get together and just have a little bit of water cooler talk about what's happening in the markets. If you want to catch it live and be part of the discussion, join in every Wednesday at 10 o'clock a.m. New York, 3 p.m. UK. Just YouTube search The Trader Coffee Break on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button and you won't miss the next time we go live. And uh, before we crack on, I just want to say, look, thanks for tuning into this program every week. It's uh, We really enjoy doing it, and um, our goal is to provide as much value around the topics that aren't widely spoken about to traders. So you feel less alone as a trader, because all these things crop up for every trader, but there's no one talking about it. So you grab a coffee, you have a rant, you ask questions, and we talk about all the boring stuff <laughs> but more important yep. stuff I, I tell you what's I cool jason I, I you know i get a lot of questions on a daily basis like you you know what i've started doing i've just started instead of like responding in like these massive paragraphs i just forward people to coffee break episodes so i'm like i'm like dude we like we just talked about that the other day like how can i how do i know if my strategy is failing and how can i'm like post-market analysis like here's the link go Amazing. check it out so like just subscribe subscribe have that notification bell hit and you can join us each and every week and, and watch the past episodes and, and you'll get a lot of the answers to the yep. questions that you have, especially if you're a newer trader, because we're kind of going in that order of knocking off the the most popular and relevant topics that are out there. And like you said, that aren't often discussed because they're boring and not yeah. sexy and all that fun stuff. Yeah, it's a fantastic resource. This channel is a fantastic resource and it's going to just become bigger and bigger. But the beauty of it is it's not kind of everything about everything it's all of the kind of fundamental universal principles around successful trading so whatever you listen to on this channel will be needed in your trading um so that's great it's a fantastic place and uh, we've got a busy chat today i don't know if you guys hey. are like skiving off work or, or <laughs> what, but... <laughs> hovering <laughs> around the water cooler <laughs> their phones out <laughs> we got a busy one so um this week we're talking about risk, how much to risk on each trade. And I've actually got the results for a poll that you ran, Akil, on your Twitter and your YouTube channel. Before I show the results to that, do you want to just talk about why you ran that poll, what the kind of purpose was behind it? And then we'll ask these guys, before we show them the kind of what came up most, we'll ask these guys in the chat what they risk as well. Yeah, of course. And going off the subject of like the non sexy, unattractive stuff uh, about trading is risk management. Um, I've always heard the saying that good traders are great risk managers. And we were just having this discussion this morning in a live room about a trader, you know, he we're talking about higher time frame versus lower time frames and how the 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 signals or the setups or the the candles printed on the higher time frames are they're, they're much more important than the lower time frame. And he's like, well, what about frequency? If I have to wait for something to be confirmed mm. on the daily, you know, can I just go down to a five minute chart and get more frequency? And it's like, well, you could, yeah, but you're gonna get a lot more false signals. Yeah. And trading a lot, trade frequency is, is something that a lot of newer traders kind of, they, they feel like they have to be in trades all the time. They have to be busy. I can't be a trader if mm. I'm not trading. Um, and then one of the lessons you learn over time is that it's really, quality over quantity. It's more about the quality of trades you take, even if it's less, um, more so than like just the amount of trades. And 
risk management falls right into that. I think a lot of newer traders think like, I've got to make a million dollars right away. If I don't make a hundred percent return right now, I'm failing as a trader because you know, Pipzilla over on the internet said that they made a hundred percent yesterday and made two hundred percent today, and now I'm slacking. So they feel this need to make more, and in order to make more, they risk more, thinking that hey, if I just risk more per position, when I win, I'm going to make more, and and that's true to a certain yeah. extent. The problem is most of these traders don't win more. They don't prepare for what happens when they lose more. So when they take that extra risk, trying to get those those glorious profits, it ends up backfiring them. They lose. And what happens to be a normal loss, and we talk about this with drawdowns, how our job is to survive them, keep our head afloat until the next extension comes. These traders don't survive it because they risk far too much. And all of a sudden, a normal losing streak is devastating to their account. So we were having that discussion and I just was curious. I wanted to ask people, I said, hey, you know, I'm very conservative with my risk, but yeah. even in the bigger scheme of professional trading, I, I actually think it's more of the aggressive side, but um, what do traders think is a high risk? What is, um, you know, what do you risk per trade? Is it 1%, 2%, 3%, 5%, 10%? And I was just curious about the answers that I would get. And like I said, we, if you guys want to type it in on the chat, we'd love to hear yeah. what you guys want to say. Because I think you're going to be a little bit surprised by the results. Yeah. Maybe not necessarily where the bulk lies, but where the gap is. The yeah, gap, the yeah. So what, 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 what were the options, kill? Remember, it was like... Um, the options, I think, were... Ooh, man, I got to remember. It was, I think, under 1%. And then it was between 1% and 3%. And then it was between 3 and 5%. And then above five percent, if I remember yeah, correctly. Yeah, yeah. So you guys in the chat, let us know. Do you risk less than one percent between one and three percent, between three and five percent, or more than five percent? Those were the, those are the options I've just found them. So, we're going to show you guys what came up in the poll because we ran this across social media. Mm -hmm. uh, but just interesting to see what you say. So George is saying one to two percent. Um. You guys aren't fast enough. I'm just going to put the, <laughs> I'm going to put the poll up right now. So on your screen you should see now that staggeringly the mm. result is between 1 and 3% unanimously is the majority vote across both uh polls. So yeah, Akil, there's the uh there's the answers, right? Yeah, and I, I was surprised um, in a good way. You know, typically when you when you feed stuff to the internet, um, we kind of, I guess we have a we got to give our, ourselves not ourselves but our, our followers more credit. We have a, a really good tribe of mm -hmm. followers that are professional traders, so maybe yeah. the the people that are seeing our content are a little bit more educated than the normal people out there. But typically, when you put something out to the internet like this, you know, I expected like more than five yeah. percent for yeah. most people, and, and I think. One one to three percent is a a good range. Less than one percent. It was cool to see that kind of so high as well. So a lot of traders are really protecting their capital, taking low risk. What I found to be interesting is that that three to five percent, like it's just skipped over. Yeah. And I don't know why. I don't know if you have an opinion. It, it's just is it just you go from conservative, then it's just like nah, just go really big after that. Like you would think it would kind of work in line where it'd be it, it would. I don't know. That, yeah, it's really me. interesting. It's really interesting. The three to five percent has only got ten, like nine point yeah. nine percent on Twitter, and yeah, like six percent on YouTube. That's that's crazy. I don't know. Right. What, I would have thought the majority would be where the majority is, so that mm -hmm. that's you know, as you say, our community is really really decent and. Obviously, we've got everyone in the chat here. They're all putting 1% to 2%, 1%, 1%, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5. .5. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a Pucks. great... That's, you. that's great. How are you going to get rich quick doing that? <laughs> <laughs> but the 3%, 3 to 5%, why do you guys think that is? I, I, man, it, it sends shivers down my spine that more than 12% of people answered more than 5%. Um, and I, I've had a chance to think about this for a week since we first discussed, and, and the only thing I could think about is that maybe that maybe that's where the balance is. You know, maybe if we talk about 
professional traders or those taking a professional trading mindset where it's like maybe three is that absolute max where it's like, man, like even if I'm super aggressive, like anything over three. And, and I've heard that a lot in, in yeah. my journeys where it's like, man, 3%, that's like at the top of the risk scale. Mm. So maybe that's where it ends for the professional trader. And then after that, it's only the people that risk 10, 20%. Yeah. Maybe the, the professional conservative trader is like three, that's the ceiling, no more. There's none in that middle ground and everyone else is kind of the, the reckless, I don't want to say reckless, but the, the big, the big, big, big riskers. That's the only thing I can think about is that's where the scale ends. That, that's the separation gap between yeah. the quote unquote professional traders and the ones that are a little bit more risky. I don't want to say reckless because not, I'm going to share a few, a, a message in a little bit about someone that has a different approach, but maybe that's it. Maybe that's just the gap. That's yeah. It. Yeah, I, th I think you're right. 22% on Twitter That's... said more than 5%. Jeez. Oof. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, yeah, and, and Bobby's just got a good point. He said maybe people going from risking little and not seeing reward oh. quick enough, so they ramp it up to get rich quick. Uh, you yeah. know, it could that could be it. That could contribute to what it certainly... Um, Oh, you're Remember right. The... Some, someone just KP just brought the McDonald's guy you interviewed. Yeah, man. Ago, was... I don't know how many years ago that was. The guy at McDonald's who couldn't look away from his phone. I remember he was saying he was risking 15% a time. Yeah, that's a uh, great I, point. I don't I know mean, if I that's... told you. I, 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 could, I could never watch that full video. What, what from cringing? And yeah, cringing. It's like, yeah, it's like watching like a horror movie or like, it's just like, I can't, like, it just, I couldn't. Yeah. Like, I, I couldn't do it. It was like, I, I knew where it was going. I knew it wasn't going to change. And it's like, I just, like, it's like watching a car crash. Like, I'd rather just turn my eyes away because I'm like, I know, like, we, yeah. we deal with this. We even traders we work with for, you know, we try to help. But every once in a while, we get that person that is just like, they're unwilling to help themselves. And it's yeah. like, you just, you know where it's going. You just don't want to watch it. Yeah. That's, uh, oh, and with, and with that type of risk management, I think your ego plays such a big part in your downfall and your kind of demise as a trader because... I mean, this guy, I don't know if I got this bit on camera or not, but I was talking to the guy for quite a while. And um, I remember him saying he had a big security business and he was like living the life. And, security. you know, now here he is like wearing jacket with rips in it and like he can barely afford his rent and he's just desperate to get a win on trading. And, oh man, it's just so sad to see. It doesn't need to be like that. Um, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, that was that was being at the right place at the right time to bring awareness to the rest of the guys. That was a great video if you can go and stomach watching the whole thing. Um, but yeah, so that's the poll. What yeah? What do we recommend? What's the kind of approach to well, risk management? Before we get into that, I, so I, I have an interesting question I'm going to share with you. And I, I think this is, um, I think it's a good one, and I, I think it kind of. It maybe doesn't answer our question about why there's the gap in there, but it is something to ponder and something that we should we should touch on. And there was a question that said, swing trading, this was under the poll, said swing trading, um, I risk 5%, scalping 10%. And again, I don't, you know, that whole thing, we can get into scalping or whatnot, whatnot. But here's the part that stood out to me, it said, I've been trading for 15 years and I used to trade one to 3% risk, but I would always kick myself at the end of the year when I saw how much more money I could have made with higher risk. That's a little bit of a red flag right there, but we'll keep going. So I finally increased my risk, uh, increased it, but it's very important. If you're going to take higher risk, you have to know your strategy and how it performs over the long haul. I'm talking five plus years. Most traders have not been trading long enough to take risk over 3% per trade, but once you have been profitable five plus years, I would advise you increase your risk. And I thought this was very interesting because usually you read that in initial reactions like, you idiot, what are you yeah. doing? But I think there is something to, maybe not necessarily saying you need to increase your risk or that much, but there is something to saying that as you know, everyone's in a different situation. So we have a few traders on the chat here that are going through funding challenges. I talked to a few of our traders on the platform who have been funded and they have very strict risk requirements from their challenge. So they have to risk less than what they maybe normally with their own money because yeah. it's not their money, right? Their boss is saying, hey, this is your cap and you'll get that whenever you work for a prop firm or you're managing money. 
However, when it's your own money, you could do whatever you want with it. You hopefully you do it in a responsible way. But I can see the case for someone saying, hey, I've been doing this for 15 years. Mm. I know my system. I know my setup. I know what my max drawdown is. I know what my numbers are. Based on what I've seen from that data, I know that, and just like kind of what we do with our, our money management spreadsheet, I know that I can risk more and still keep enough safety not to do anything dumb. Yeah. And I'm curious, what do you, maybe not the specifics of how much he's risking, but that idea of the more you know yourself, the more aggressive or risk you can take. Yeah. That's something that is yay, nay. Yeah, I, I agree. I think the we talked about kind of, a, um, you know, discretion becoming secondary into your trading. And look, I, I think some of the, when you get to know the higher quality setups, if you've got a scoring system for your trades, for instance, you can become more aggressive with your target taking or your reward to risk profile or your entry technique or your position size. And, uh, you know, you build that dynamically into your trading system using your own discretion. And by doing that, you know that you understand and you've got full control over your trading plan. Um, if you try to just shoot from the hip and hit a 5% loss in one trade, not really knowing why you've taken a 5% loss, that's going to hurt you emotionally. And if you take two of those, you know, that's really going to tip you over the edge. Um, so I, I 100% agree. I think you, there's nothing wrong with adjusting position size and taking on more risk. But as I said, it's it's secondary. It's it's not even secondary. It's like thirdly, if that's a word. Exactly. It's like, yeah, you build a plan, you minimum risk, you, you're, you become an excellent risk manager. You then get to know your system inside out and you build discretion and then you can apply some dynamic um, management of trades entries risk and risk reward profiles that's what i would advise yeah and um, what i love about the trader is, is the statement is that he said hey he's not saying hey i you, you do this one month or one month into your trading career he's like look 15 years in five years in like once you really you you earn just like how you earn discretion you you earn that right to risk more on Again, it could be overall, it could be on certain setups, it could be in different markets. It, it's really no different, right? Well, we worked with um, a lady, Gabby, who said she got into trading originally because she wanted to be in control of her finances, Yeah, right? It's no different from you saying, hey, do I want this company managing my 401k, all my investments, where they're going to take most likely very low risk because their job isn't actually to make you money, it's to keep you around so they can charge you account management fees and all that fun stuff anyway. Or do I want to go into a financial market myself? Even if it's just, hey, I'm trading an index or something like that, mm. technically in a way it's a different type of risk, but you're taking more risk based on you know what you've you've learned. And do you want to take that skill set and do it into active trading where technically you're taking more risk, right? Because yeah. you're in charge of it. So I I, I do like that idea of, or at least the concept of, hey, you can adjust your risk based on what you've earned as a trader. I do think there obviously still need to be levels and, and mm. you still need to be risk averse, bigger picture. Like you don't want to do dumb stuff and get cocky. Um, but I would suppose that if you've made it 10 years in the market, <laughs> you're probably not doing that anyway because the, the people yeah, right. that take that type of risk they're not making it 10 5 years in the market no, <laughs> so exactly. i guess it works itself out exactly yeah no, no what do you guys think in the chat anyway let's see what you guys are saying um you can stomach higher volatility is cutting risk per trade when the market conditions are less favorable for you uh ed your edge is also a good way to smoothen your drawdown periods and preserve capital great I mean, these are the type of answers we get in our community, man. You just don't see this. Like, you really don't see this anywhere else. Um, start with a small, and then with experience and journaling, you will see whether you can increase or not. Great. Exactly that. And the, the cool thing, I mentioned the money management spreadsheet earlier. If you guys aren't familiar, we've showed it in a few of our videos. But you can play around. Once you have your either backtesting data or your live data, you can actually play around and see what that risk looks like. So you don't have to kind of just jump right in and be like, oh, I'm going to go from 3% to 10%. Like, yeah. like, you can actually plug in the numbers, right? Where you have the numbers, plug in the different risk management tactics, and you can see like, hey, if I would have risked 
oh man, it would have gave me this much. How much would it have affected my drawdown? You can find that balance area to the level you can stomach. You know, maybe you're not comfortable going to a, a 10% risk on trade because that that 17% drawdown you took is now going to be 30, but yeah. you can come to feel comfortable going to five because, well, it, it gives you a bigger return on investment, but the drawdown period isn't really changed too much. Maybe you go from like a 17% to a 20% and you're like, hey, I can deal with that, right? So you get a chance to kind of see what it looks like and, and, yeah. and kind of understand, hey, can I stomach this as a trader? Is the risk worth the reward or is the reward worth the risk, I should say? Yeah. I think the reason most traders want to go high is basically what Bobby said earlier, and that is they want they focus on monetary gain and they want to ramp up their returns, which every trader wants to do. But unfortunately, it's much wiser to focus on percentage gain rather than monetary gain, because that's what's going to ultimately allow you to sustainably trade profitably into the future and also compound your account and experience exponential growth and get investment if you want to attract investors give you the confidence to release your own capital from other areas of your business or your equity in your house or whatever it, it gives you confidence to fund your account as well if you can do two three four five percent a month or whatever the skills to generate that are identical whether you're doing that or a million dollar account it, it so focusing on percentage gain is is definitely wise uh over profit yep that's that's why i hate seeing the the things where it's like i made this many pips or someone sent me this thing yeah. the other day about i made this many dollars i'm like that doesn't mean anything <sighs> it means that like it, it did you make a hundred dollars off of a million dollar account because if you did then that's not anything right did yeah. you make a hundred dollars off of a a two hundred dollar account if you did you made an incredible return like it yeah. doesn't mean and then what is your risk what did you risk to make that yeah um the percentage percentage is really the, the thing and, and and that mindset like you said jason of like hey understanding that from a day-to-day -day standpoint i just have to do the same execution in the market the only thing changes is how much i'm doing it with yeah and if you can have the skill of doing the same thing you should be there's a psychological element that you have to kind of take on as you start investing more money um obviously but you can do the same thing and make a higher amount of money and and it's yeah. it's 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 really cool to be in an industry where you don't really have to change what you're doing and you could just keep consistently making a higher and higher ceiling it's it's there, there is no ceiling it's incredible no. um that's what i love the most about about trading absolutely so what do you guys uh what do you guys think what do you um what do you what would you advise someone who is thinking about risking five percent or more um maybe put it in the comments so that anyone who is attracted to this video who is risking five percent uh per trade sorry not per month um is going to <laughs> yeah is gonna is gonna have their eyes open slightly well one thing to touch on too and i don't want to get too much because this is going to lead us on a different topic i know our time is, is is done but just be careful with that Stuart. Stuart says on the chat makes sense to um risk down through a string of losses i'm not personally a fan of that tactic and I'm, i won't dig too much into it but think about it like this trading is a game of probabilities and risk management right so we we should know the probabilities of our system so if we have a system that hits 60 percent of the time right on historically we should win six out of ten trades right obviously that's a too small of a sample size to be realistic but just to make the numbers even so yeah. If we take four trades in a row, the probabilities are that the next six trades are more likely to be winners than losers. If we are reducing our risk after we get those losers out the way, where we run the chance of hindering our reward on the winners that are coming and not making up for the money that we lost in the previous trade. So you gotta be careful with, with kind of just like, hey, I'm on a losing streak, so I'm gonna stop trading or, or trade less because you're gonna need those winners to dig you out of the hole that you had for your losses. So just something to yeah, something to kind of think about there. And and I know why we do it. Sometimes it's 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 small picture. I don't know if you have an example you wanna you wanna share, uh, Jason, on that. No, I, I think we we could do a whole nother topic on yeah. that. Uh <laughs> You know, because there's there's one thing to incrementally risk down for a string of losses, like using um, 
what is it, the Mart- Martingdale strategy. Yeah. Or there's <laughs> kind of a you know, a smooth ratio money management where you do decrease your position size as you go through losing peers. And maybe, you know, we have done a topic on that, but yeah, I think it's, we could maybe take a deeper take conversation than yeah. what we just mentioned. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Uh, Chris says, do you have any backtesting or data to warrant uh, that much risk, the tolerance to handle that much risk and the resources to weather the storm that could happen in a drawdown? Great point. You know, um, Backtesting goes on to backtesting again, right? Have, knowing your numbers, knowing what you can risk, what your maximum drawdown is likely to be, how much you can even start to risk per trade. And then there's going into how many trades you're in. So, like, imagine if you risk 5% per trade, but you're in seven trades for the day. <laughs> <laughs> better not lose. <laughs> you better not lose. Like, it doesn't Margin take call. into consideration... Um, it doesn't take that into consideration. So although risk, even with risking 1% or 2% per trade, although that's not the, the worst thing you can do, it's not, it's also not the most efficient and dynamic, um, and effective way to manage risk. It's kind of a, it's almost like a safe, a safe place. Uh, but you still have to be aware. As I say, if you're in 10 trades, that's 10% of your account. Goodbye in one day. If you have a losing drawdown, so knowing the numbers is key. That's a great way to, uh, to to end on that point. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Remember, subscribe to the Trader Coffee Break channel. We go live on Wednesdays, 10 a.m. New York, 3 p.m. UK, talking about the subjects that, well, really you don't hear a lot about over the internet. We do it in a nice laid back fashion. We have the chat open so you guys can join as well, ask questions, and lend your opinions. YouTube search The Trader Coffee Break with Jason Greystone and myself, Akil Stokes, and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.